Hi, I'm Thomas Muse, and you're watching Garden Ecology. Well, another day, another invasive plant species. We're talking about Phragmite australis, or common reed is the name, also called big reed. When you look at the plant here, you're probably going to be pretty familiar with it. It's very, very common on the east end of Long Island, and ecologists and natural scientists are concerned about the spread of this plant. So we're going to identify it and talk about its habitat and why it grows where it grows. You've got a plant like this on the property and you want to identify it. You think it might be Phragmite and you're concerned you want to control it. First you want to identify the plant because there are some ornamental grasses that sort of mimic the, some of the growth characteristics of Phragmite australis. So you don't want to be pulling a, a nice ornamental plant that somebody got in a nursery uh, thinking it's an invasive that's colonizing your property. Um, it's got the wide blades of, of grass. The, the leaves are very wide and very long, up to two and a half feet long. Um, this is a relatively lower stand, but if you look behind me, you can see the plants. They get up to about 10 feet tall, 12 feet. Um, a very characteristic and a very easy way to identify this plant is it will always have, um, it will always have reeds from last year. They're very strong reeds. And this is the seed head from the, 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 the seed flower from uh, last year. It's still hanging around, okay? So you can see in, the, in a stand there'll always be some of these seed heads drifting. Uh, the blades are uh, opposing and alternating. That means on either side of the stem the blades come out and they oppose each other. One side, then another side, one side, then another side. And this is what it looks like when it's just coming out of the ground. Almost looks like a little bamboo. Um, this is when you want to, if you're going to try to control the plant, you want to try and get it in this state. Well, we got a good look at the rhizome of this plant, the roots of this plant. You see these, they look like vines coming up the hill here. Not quite vines. This is actually the Phragmite root. It's growing right on the surface. No bother to even go underneath the ground. Pull this up and have a little bit better look at it. This is a real a skinny rhizome, but look at this thing. <laughs> I don't know if you can get a picture of this, but... Um, You've got the various shoots coming right off at the segments of the plant. Individual shoots, look at that. About every 10 inches is a new, there's a new plant. This thing's about, I don't know, maybe 40 feet long, and it's heading up into this um, other disturbed soil area. So it's a really trying to, here it's sending a very interesting way to look at this plant. We've got a shoot here and a root here decided at this segment to send a root and at this segment it came up for a shoot. Highly intelligent and knows where it needs to get nutrients and knows where it needs to send up uh, for new foliage. You see that cream colored root? Very distinctive and it's hollow inside. <laughs> Just amazing the way these plants grow. Phragmite australis is a native. Why is it an invasive? Scientists are pretty much in agreement now that in the early 1900s introduced species of common reed from Europe, cross-pollinated with our native version of Phragmite australis, and created a third genus of the species. And that genus of the species became a much more aggressive growing plant and ended up taking over some natural areas and becoming an invasive species. Generally, this plant is considered to be um, a pioneer species in areas where soil quality has been compromised due to excavation. If you have a new home site and there's that kind of activity, this, that's the time to look for. You want your landscape gardener or yourself to get out there and, and keep an eye for this invasive species. It also likes water. It likes fresh water and brackish water. It can take a salinity content in the brackish realm, not complete salt water, so it won't grow right on the shoreline, as we'll see. Most of, uh, most of homeowners who are going to have an issue with this plant are going to be people who have uh, waterfront property. And uh, this plant is, um, sometimes it has a very strong impact on a property because it grows very tall. I said up to about 12, 13 feet. And so it can block water views. And that's a real problem with this plant as far as the value of people's property. Um, there are a legitimate ways to control this plant but you really, since you're more than likely going to be working in a wetland site if you've got a property and you have this plant, then you're going to need to have permits and you're going to need to consult your local conservation department and get permits and get professional advice about controlling this plant. Controlling Phragmite australis is a big deal. Um, the Nature Conservancy is really doing most of the research in the country right now. They're doing the research, but nothing definitive yet. Um, as a homeowner trying to tackle a stand of Phragmites, <laughs> I think you're going to be... Uh, I think the Phragmite is going to outmatch you. Seek professional advice. As I visit sites on the east end of Long Island and I walk through the landscape, 
I keep an eye out for this plant because it's really telling me a lot about the soil conditions and about the history and the way the land has been treated and also about the, the water quality in the area. So this is a real indicating species of the general health of the ecology of the landscape you're looking at. Well, enough talk. It's a beautiful afternoon. Let's get on the boat and get on the water and go and look at some sites where Phragmite australis is showing up.